forget to hit that like and subscribe button or the notification bell. Do you want to miss out? <laughs> Ow! What the <laughs> hell, man? Oops. <laughs>
Special shout out to Taylor who donated an air fryer to Sequel Centric so we can toast up some chicken nugs or pizza rolls while we record our pizza nugs. Pizza nugs. <laughs> I want pizza nugs. Chicken nugs or pizza rolls while we record type or bicker. Thank we don't you very bicker. much. We you have, help me. We don't bicker. We have uh spirited debates. We have yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone at the Super Outrageous Tears can go pick a sequel movie or a spinoff like Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F, or The Continental from the World of John Wick for us to review. Try, try us at one of those levels today. Today's movie blockbuster is from the early 2000s, really early, Planet of the Apes, starring Mark Wahlberg, Marky Mark, and his funky bunch. Good vibrations. Helena, Helena, help. Helena Bonham Carter, Tim Roth, Michael Clark, Duncan, Paul Giamatti, Chris Christopherson, and Charlton Heston. Man, that's a stacked. Oof. And we forgot. And, and uh, we forgot Warner. Yeah, David Warner. David Warner. Yeah, yeah. Who played Sark and Tron and a whole bunch of other. He's been in a a lot of stuff. Yeah. He's been acting since the sixties. Um. This was 20th Century Fox's trying to reboot the franchise after 28 years. What, uh, so uh, what's your history with this IP? My history with this Simeon IP uh, goes back to watching the classic films. Uh, IP on... of the Simeon variety? Yeah. <laughs> uh, me and Jamie used to watch uh, the, the old run that we had just recently watched. You know, on Disney Plus slash Hulu, mm -hmm. uh, it, yeah, they usually ran on a they ran a marathon over the weekend during the summer or like Fourth of July or something, if, if I recall correctly. But you know, I was usually over at Jamie's house, um, watching them. Um, I mainly watched. Uh, you and I went to go see the two, this this version mainly because Tim Burton was directing it. Yeah, and, we're big fans um, of Tim Burton. We've seen the first two ape movies of the current iteration, Rise of the Planet Apes and Dawn of the Planet Apes, but we haven't seen the last two. Um, so we're kind of on this Planet of the Apes kick. Is that our so, next watch? Uh, yeah, just to watch the 2011 version. The, the yeah, yeah. last two that we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you? What's your history with this long-standing franchise? Well, being that we're from the same generation, pretty much the same as you. Um, I I remember seeing the the last two. Yeah. More so, I don't know if I I don't remember seeing the earlier ones or even yeah. you know the first one. So, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes from 1972 and the Battle for the Planet of the Apes of 1973. Right. Okay. I I, I do remember seeing those as a kid mm -hmm. um it might have they might have been the on the mother tucker's no watch list because you know I, that, talking apes that might have scared me because i was so sensitive as a child <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i mean and we we recently watched the original yeah the movies. 68 through 73 run right yeah. and which Even, was interesting yeah. and you know it's gonna it gives us a baseline of what to you know to compare this one too yeah yeah this one too yeah so. i mean this this franchise predates you know alien from ridley scott which freaked you out and then star wars from george freaked Lucas. me out Terrif <laughs> terrified me <laughs> so you know but at the time after during the movies there was a, a 14 episode one season run of a live action of planet of the apes plus uh, I think that was 73, 74. And then after that, a year after that, they had an animated one. So it was it was in the zeitgeist at the time, like Star Wars. It, it had merchandise. It had lunch pails. It had everything. So, yeah. Um, and then it just, it ran its course and laid dormant until um, 20th Century Fox, you know, wanted to do something. And hey, I don't know how this? they picked Tim Burton, but, you know, Tim Burton's got a very creative mind. Oh, yes, he and does. And he looks at things from a different angle or yeah. perspective than some other directors. So, yeah. in Which, my opinion, this was right up his wheelhouse. Yeah, and, yeah, I mean, uh, he does have a different perspective, which is one of the things that I like about Tim Burton. Yeah. One of the many things that I like about Tim Burton 
and you know the movies that he does yeah. and i mean you so yeah like you this this is definitely was up his wheelhouse and i i i can appreciate his artistic vision vision yeah i for me this movie hit a little bit more than say his other like remake or reboot of like charlie and the chocolate factory but that's another episode yeah, that's another episode well let's uh run down some movie facts for everybody planet of the apes uh this version released on july 27th 2001 rated pg-13 with a running time of 119 minutes or 120 minutes depending on who you look what at. the <laughs> interwebs tell you about <clears throat> director shocker tim burton screenplay by william broils 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 jr lawrence connor mm. marshall rosenthal marshall mark mark what did i say marshall yeah wow <laughs> I don't know where I got that. Where's from. your glasses? I don't know. <laughs> You're supposed to have the cybernetic eye. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Based on the Planet of the Apes by uh, Pierre. Pierre Boule. Boule, Boule. Boule, Boule. Sorry. Music by one of the goats, Danny Elfman, distributed by 20th Century Fox. A budget of 100 million, a box office return of 362.2 million. Seems like it. I'm not an exec, but from my point of view, well, that looks like a success. Yeah. Uh, the only thing missing is Johnny Depp. <laughs> Tim Burton, Danny Elfman, and Johnny Depp are like, m more often than not, go to those yeah, three yeah. are like, you know, like they have a contract with each other, but you know. Yeah, the three of them usually they have a lot of projects together. So yeah. yeah. Sandra. Yep, hit, us, hit us up with a rundown of Planet of the Apes 2001. Okay. So whether this was a remake or reboot, the plot of the movie parallels the 1968 version pretty well. A US astronaut goes through an anomaly in space. Crashes on a planet ruled by the talking simians, and humans are the slaves and or pets. The space jockey breaks out of the ape city with the help of some primates and head into a forbidden area or zone. They learn some truth about the past, and there's a confrontation. A battle ensues, and at the end of the movie, the protagonist leaves. Yeah, I... Uh... Bye, Felicia! <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's after rewatching the original trilogy, it's crazy how much this one reflects the 1968 one with uh, Charles Charl Charlton Heston. Mm -hmm. But you, if you know Tim Burton and his style, you can see his influence in it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, you know, uh, down somewhere, maybe in fun facts, Rick Baker, the master of makeup, oh, God, was on yeah. here. And I know, I think the 68 or um, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, uh, 1970, it, it was either nominated or got an award from the Academy for the makeup, which was good at the time. But, um, you know, the current version, they got the CGI with Andy Serkis. But this is kind of the bridge. It, it takes the original makeup to the next level. And it and it's just so damn real, you know. You it, it almost makes you believe that these are real life talking apes without the CGI. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I would I would agree with you. Um, the movie is a definite upgrade from the '68 version. Mm -hmm. You know, just because. You know, technology yeah, is advanced technology, and all. Making, yeah. yeah, everything. Yeah. Uh, in the movie, it does have a quicker pace and it keeps you. I think it keeps you engaged a little more. Yeah. Because there was there in the original one, there's some some dry spots where it just kind of drags. And it's I like, agree. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this one, you know, they're they're uh it flows a little more i agree um i commend tim burton for taking on this herculean task you know right. there are a lot of great things about this version of planning apes the the monkey prosthetics 
like I said, are on point. The music from Danny Elfman is fantastic, as always. Yeah. And like you just mentioned, He's the pacing, in the pacing of the movie feels like it's moving a little bit quicker than the the '68 version. Yeah. Um, uh, Elf Elfman is is a fantastic composer. Mm -hmm. For him, he's up there with um, John John Williams, Williams um, and Giacchino. You know, yeah. and even Han, even even Hans Zimmer. Those guys are you know, Williams has run his course. I I think after doing you know the fifth Indiana Jones movie, I think he's stepping down. So you got yeah, you got Elfman, retire. you got Giacchino, and you got uh, Zimmerman um, coming in as as the the new composers uh who just they but for me they always hit whatever yeah. they do so a few of the special effects don't uh, hold up but you know that's okay because you don't really see them that long um what's your uh impressions and thoughts uh, a little bit more well, any, more right? yeah. yeah um yeah the music was you know, fantastic and I noticed in a couple of parts, it kind I for me it kind of nodded towards the '68 version. There's mm -hmm. a couple of scenes where the sound effects yeah. and the music mm -hmm. were like from the '68 version yeah. movie. Uh, I think one of them was they were during the the when they were trying to escape the city. The yeah. you hear the bongos. Yeah. yeah. Or I think those were bongos. Yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. And that made me think of, you know, some of this, the yeah. music and sound effects from the yeah the original. Yeah, the original one. And it, it, even Beneath the Planet of the Apes when yeah. Brent comes in to find Taylor and then he goes right. to the same ape city and Cornelius and Zira, who helped Taylor escape, help him. So, yeah. Right. A, yeah. Uh and I guess that's one of the differences that I noticed is that they didn't, he, um, Burton didn't use the same characters. Yeah, he yeah. had new characters. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I guess that's another, I guess, level that for the, for it to be a remake or reboot or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Refresh. Yeah. <laughs> Refresh. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you've already given me some pros about it, but you have any other pros of, about this version? Um, the special effects yeah. and the makeup. Yep. Yeah. Those are stellar. I, I agree. But, Plus, you yeah. know, hats off to, you know, Rick Baker, because you know, he is the master of... Oh, yeah. I mean... The master of makeup. Yeah, I mean, Star Wars and I think American Wolverine from London. I mean, the guys, I mean, you look at his oh. resume, it's pretty damn impressive. Uh -huh. Another thing for me as a pro, uh, there's a few nods here and there uh, in the film that, that are uh, the, the nods to the 68 version. You know, it's like, get your hands. I don't want to jump to my favorite line, but get your hands off me, you damn dirty human, which is a right is a, a nod, a, a nod the... to a, get your hands off me, you damn dirty ape. From, right, you know, sixty-eight from the sixty-eight version. Yeah, and um, yeah, and there was, there's those, you know, yeah. the classic lines yeah. that kind of nod to the original. The even the one with, when, uh, Charlton Heston's, you know, on his deathbed, you know, damn them all to hell, you know. Yeah, yeah. as uh, yeah, as uh, General Thane's father. Yeah. Yeah. When we they, uh, read the credits, I flipped out. You know, it's like what Charlton? They gave him a cameo. Of course, you, if you if you know his voice and you hear him speak, you know it's him. But I wasn't one hundred percent sure. But um, like you said, another pro for me, like you said earlier, the pacing of this version. Yeah. Is uh for me works for me better than the '68 version. I yeah. When we were watching the '68 version not too long ago. It was I was just starting to nod off because I mean it's telling a story you know and I'm sure the pacing that was the pacing for movies back in 68 and early 70s but you know it just sometimes to go back and watch some of these classic films <clears throat> is is a is a, sl a sludge a grudge uh what, what's the word I'm looking for it's a it, it just I mean man you feel like you're going up a mountain oh a, a dredge yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's like one of the it's like a, it's like doing a mud run. Yeah, it's just like you're trying to get through it. And it's like, hey, but the oh. mud is all caked on you, and you're weighing down. So, yeah, you got any cons on this movie? 
Uh, some of the, like the ending yeah. was a little confusing. I agree. Yeah, the first time we saw it, and just I mean, even this last time we watched it before recording, so, I had, I had to do a little looking up because I was it was still just I wasn't like one hundred percent sure on the ending. So it's like, did he go parallel? Did mm -hmm. he go into the future? Did he go into the past? You know, they they don't really. Well, the thing is, is when he went into the anomaly and came out the other side, he, uh, unlike the 68 version where Charlton Heston was on Earth the whole time, but he thought he was on another planet. Yeah. In this case, I did a little research. He Mark was... Wahlberg's character, Leo, was on another planet. Yeah. You know, and then when he got came back and went back to Earth, what happened is at some point, Thane actually escaped. Spoiler alert! Thade. Thane. Thade. Uh, Thade. D, not N. Thane, whatever. Thade. Thade. <laughs> Escaped and went to the stars, went through the same anomaly, somehow went back in our Earth's history. And that's why you see him as the, you know, the. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, Ape, Abraham Lincoln. Sorry. Yeah, don't spray it. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, you know, that. And then even critics were saying overall they enjoyed the movie, but the ending was like so confusing you know um you got any other and for me um the wire work some of that when the monkeys were jumping up mm -hmm. you could clearly see that that was wire work really yeah i thought some of the wire work in the matrix which was 1999 which was better than some of the wire work in in the, oh, this version I, of didn't, I didn't get that okay so um i don't have any others uh, for me, and this is only because um, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but, you know, the one thing so I... So you say. Yeah, well, okay, that's another episode. <laughs> go see Rebel Go see Rebel Moon on Patreon.com slash Sequelcentric. Um, I like the Kyle, Kylo Ren character, but my one con, if we were going to review it, is the fact that his, tantrum, his tantrums, yeah, 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 yeah. And Thane had a similar Thane. like, what? Thane. You spelled fade, but you keep saying Thane. I just fade. Um, you know, he get I mean, just having a having a hissy fit like Kylo Ren. Well, yeah. Well, I guess I don't see that as a con. I see that as a pro to Tim Ross acting. Yeah. And because I mean. That's what a, a chimp would do is have a hissy fit when they didn't get their way. Yeah, I agree. And but they're so supposed would to be a little bit more evolved, though. True, but they're still primates. <sighs> they're still apes. I wouldn't even say primate. Sandy, start hitting me with some fun facts. No, because I'm not finished. I have something to say. <laughs> so would you say... I will smack you. I know. <laughs> Everybody knows. They say, they've seen it in the intro. <laughs> I will smack you. Would, would you say that... I would say that, you know, Kylo Ren's hissy fit was more of a, I don't know, out of character? Well, I mean, it's it's sort of like how, you know, sometimes when a teenager doesn't get their way. Yeah, exactly. They might act up, and I'm speaking from personal experience, even though I'm, you know, in my 50s. So, but I yeah. still remember, you know, when you asked, hey, hey, can I go spend the night at someone's house? No, you didn't no. do your chores. It's like, what? But you said, but you didn't your dad. You, I said, if you did your chores, you could go and spend the night at your friend's house. And yeah, you didn't do your that's chores. how I threw a sh that's how I you know, kicked so. the shoe through a window. <laughs> He kicked a shoe through a window. Now that's a that's another story. Look how first there's the dryer and you almost bit your tongue off in the Godzilla review. Now let's hear this story about how you kicked a shoe through a window. I didn't get my way about something and I was having a temper fit and I stormed in my bedroom. I slammed the door and I kicked my shoe off and it went flying through the window. Did it break the window? Or was yeah, no, it went through the window. Oh my God. I didn't think I kicked it that hard. Wow. <laughs> and it was just like one of my slip-on like wed wedges. Yeah. You know, 
that way you know, wow loafer type wedge man yeah siobhan you can ask siobhan she was there for that one because she was like "Ooh, you're gonna get in trouble you're like no i'm the favorite and i'm like Fuck. <laughs> well probably not then i was probably more of a fudge <laughs> well talking about fudge fudge is fun fudge is fun you want to I, I got some facts for you actually go hit us up with some fun facts there sandra okay 20th century fun fact nate 20th century fox asked tim burton if he would be interested in doing a sequel and burton's reply was i'd rather jump out a window wow that's <laughs> that's a hot take right there uh, I know uh, Mark Wahlberg and uh, Helen uh, Bonham Carter would have returned if Tim Burton pursued a sequel. And uh, development for a new or remake of an Apes movie started back in 1988 with Adam Rifkin. Terry Hayes' script titled... No idea who he is. Neither do I. His name looks familiar, but I can't Does place it? any of his work. Okay. But Terry Hayes' script titled Return of the Apes would have starred the Terminator himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger, under the direction of Philip Nice. Noice. 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 <laughs> Wahlberg. He backed out of his commitment to Ocean's Eleven to take on this remake, and Matt Damon was eventually cast for that role. <laughs> Which blows my mind because I get those guys flipped around sometimes. Uh, Gary Oldman, a.k.a. Sirius Black from Harry Potter, was originally cast as General Fade, but dropped out. Wow. That one almost worked out because I think Tim Roth plays a better villain. I've not, I've not seen Oldman. Gary Oldman played sort of the bad guy in The Fifth Element, the arms dealer. That's true. He played a creepy villain, though. He played Dr. Smith in the the remake of... Uh, Again, he played creepy. <laughs> he does creepy. <laughs> Talking about creepy, you got anything about Severus Snape so, and Tim Roth? Yeah. Getting there. Gotcha. Tim Roth declined the role of Severus Snape in The Sorcerer's Stone due to his commitment to Burton's film. And then Rick, Alan Rickman picked it up. Which I'm glad, because I think Rickman nailed Snape. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it would, but, you know, when I was trying to look up some fun facts, I mean, those last two ones that are, that we just said, just, it blew my mind, you know? It's like, wow. Yeah. Um. Oh, well, you know, we've already kind of gone over what our favorite lines were. Yeah. I'll, so. read it, re, I'll read it. I'll reiterate mine. Get your hands off me, you damn dirty ape, when uh, Mark Wahlberg's character t t touches um, the, the soldier. The, 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 yeah, the gorilla general. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what his name. Uh, not Aldo. That was that was another our, one. Our, it was an A name. I can't remember it. <laughs> yeah, of course, you know. Uh, and then you know yeah. the other classic yeah. line: "Damn them, damn them all to hell." Yeah. <laughs> and uh, dead. <laughs> yeah. Favorite scene. Mm. Since we were talking about you know damn them, damn them to all the hell when Thane's. Goes to see his dying father, and his father tells him the truth about their origins. Yeah. And, you know, once again, the sheer fact that Charlton Heston had a cameo in this movie is, uh, I think, honors the legacy of this franchise, you know? Yeah, I agree. Um, that, was a, that was a good scene and kind of a pivotal moment, uh, at least for Thade's character. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like the scene where <laughs> it, it was towards the end um, after I, it's after Thade and, and what's his name? Leo. Leo. They fight after their epic fight and he gets, mm -hmm. you know, they get trapped and everything. And he goes to get um, the, the, the chimp. Prometheus. Prome no, per. Per per Pericles. Per per Pericles. Pericles. He goes to get Pericles and uh, Paul Giamatti's character is like hiding in one of the caves. Is it over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I come out now? <laughs> well, you're ready to play your favorite game. Does it laser disc? No. Well, we're going to do it anyways. Sandy. Well, that was my answer. Okay. <laughs> oh, no? No. 
No, you don't want to play it? Or the answer is no, it's not on laser no, disc. No, it's not. That is correct. It is not on laser disc. Ding, ding, ding. You, <laughs> you keep your record of every, you know, 100%. Excellent. Hey, Nate, does it sequel? Well, that's a good question. For me, the movie sequels as a remake or a reboot or a refresh. It has everything the 1968 has, plus a little bit more. The pacing of the film works for me a lot, but I'm torn between watch it and ditch it. Um, what about you? Uh, I'm torn between watch it and buy it. So I guess we're going to go with watch it since we... That's the... the middle ground. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Nate, throw up the verdict. Yeah, Nate. <laughs> Before we wrap up today's episode, Sequel Centric would like to give a special shout out to one of our subscribers, Miguel de la Roca. Roja? Roca? Roca. Roca. He has just launched his new book, Fate, F-A-T-E, My Future After Traumatic Events, a powerful story about a man who went through a lot from being dead at birth to having cancer as a teenager, as well as his time as a soldier during Desert Storm and beyond. The author has been very open about his experiences battling the angel of death. We're totally Melvin death, dude. <laughs> and traumatic <laughs> events, which has become an inspiration to always push forward and never give up. Available online at Amazon plus Barnes and Nobles in both physical and ebook. Would you say this is an autobiography? I feel it's... like you're signifying some sort of movie quote with Otto. No. No. Oh. I'm just saying, you know, if the author wrote the book about his stories, oh, that yeah. makes it an autobiography. Autobots roll out. <laughs> and there's your education for the day. That's it for today's review of Planet of the Apes 2001. Post your comments and thoughts below on this remake uh, flick. <laughs> and what do we have on the calendar for the rest of the summer months, Nate? We have a few projects in the works like Home Sweet Home Alone Rewatch. Because Christmas in July. Deadpool Uno. Uh, because Deadpool and Wolverine's coming out. Uh, so that should be exciting. And over on Patreon, we're hard at work on a 90s watch list. What will Sandy pick as yeah, that favorite was... night? Could it be Nightmare Before Christmas? Maybe Jurassic Park? Who that knows? was supposed to be our 4th of July, but I wasn't feeling well. I'm better now. That's all that matters. Don't forget to check out our other content on YouTube and Patreon. And you can listen to us on podcasting apps like Google, Apple, and Amazon. And until next time, ask yourself this one question. Does it sequel? Bye. Three dunes ago.